the electricity was cut out for the whole complex. This is not allowed. There are many stories to be heard. Hey friends, welcome. I'm Axie, your favorite YouTube architect, reporting on beautiful Canary Island, Tenerife. Today I'm looking at important things to keep in mind when looking for a property on this beautiful island. So this is a follow-up on the video focusing on important facts to know about Andalusia when looking for a home there. And then we moved on and we started looking in Tenerife and it's very interesting. I discovered that basically most of the things that I was addressing in that video do not apply to Tenerife. So this video is completely new facts. First things first, I'm going to address the question of real estate agents, which is one of the points that I addressed before, but now I'm gonna address it in a different way. So just a quick explanation of how real estate agents work in Tenerife. There's almost always a 5% commission that is paid by the sellers and that is paid to the real estate agent or agents making the transactions. Usually the real estate agents work together here. So the most usual way to go to viewing is to contact and to have your own real estate agent who will arrange all the visits for you and who will contact all the other listings and real estate agents and you will go together with them to view them. This is not the only thing they do. They have a very important role and if you have your own real estate agent, they check papers, they check that the bills are paid on time, they check that the property doesn't have any debts and that it's legal. So they actually do a lot of background work during the process of searching and also in the case that you buy a property, they arrange a lot of logistical things like making sure the payments go on time, arranging the payments, so basically you do the payment through them. So basically they do a lot of work and having a real estate agent on your side, so to say, let's say the buyer's side, means that you have someone who will do always an extra check for you and who will ideally advise you. Actually, we were very lucky that we know a real estate agent that guided us through this whole process and she basically arranged everything. So she was very honest and genuine and literally having our best interest at heart. So basically, if you want to see an apartment either from Idealista or Fotocasa or any other kind of site, the first thing I would recommend doing is either asking for recommendations or looking for a real estate agent that will start this process for you. If you are interested, I can give you the contact of the person that we work with. So let me know, write to me if you'd be interested in that. Also, while we're on the topic of interactions, if you like this video and you find it useful, consider subscribing because that will encourage me to make more videos and that will make me very happy. Yay. So the second point that I want to address is regarding apartment complexes. This is something that is not new. It's quite usual in very touristic places. And I guess I just wasn't used to it. So I wasn't used to seeing as many apartment complexes and apartments in this kind of complexes. And there's many things to know here as well. So point two is split into multiple points regarding apartment complexes as well. The first point is that there are two types one of them being touristic and the second one being residential. And these have very different terms and condition of using the complex. So the touristic one, obviously, as his name says, it's touristic. That means that it works as a hotel. So basically it has a reception, it has a service desk. And if you want to rent it out, you always have to go through the complex and they will take a commission for this service. The second type of apartment, the residential ones, obviously as it says the names, they're mostly for living. And actually some of them have it in their terms and conditions that they cannot be rented short term. So always ask the terms and condition of the apartment complex that you're interested in buying an apartment in. If you're thinking I'm gonna live here for a few years and I can just rent it out with Airbnb, no worries. Actually, we went to some complexes that had this very clearly stated in the terms and condition, like the bylaws of the complex, this is not allowed. <laughs> So yeah, it's just good to know and good to ask before. The second thing that I want to talk about is that a lot of complexes have amenities and the greatest amenities of all that I find here is the fact that a lot of them have pools. And I'm not even talking about luxury complexes, I'm just talking about normal complexes. So basically like four blocks of flats with a pool in between them which is very cool because pools are so expensive to, to build and to maintain. And the fact that you have a pool, so basically all of them are big and you can swim in them, 
I think it's very cool to have a shared pool. You can go there wherever you want. And then, yeah, you have a pool. It's very cool. Regarding these amenities, so basically the pool and maybe some other things that you would have in the complex, it's always the following point is that it's always good to ask about the maintenance fees of the complex. Each apartment has a monthly maintenance, which can vary from 60 euros to up to 200 euros. I don't know, maybe even more, depending uh, on the complex and also on the size of the apartment in the complex. So a small apartment will always have a smaller fee than a big apartment. It's always good to know and good to ask about this beforehand because they usually know it. Then another point regarding apartment complexes, <laughs> obviously, they are very cool, I like them, but there are some which are not in a great state, which have not been well maintained. And you, when you go in them, you see that there's not that many people, the maintenance wasn't done well, so you can see like the pool is not well maintained or there's absolutely no plants, no gardening, and it just looks a bit off. It looks like something is missing. I would advise anyone to be well aware of this fact and to not ignore them. This is quite a big red flag. I would inquire more into like what people say about this complex. It could be that it's just fallen out of grace. It could be that it has depth, which is very problematic. So always ask if the complex has depth. The worst story that I've heard about this is that in a complex, someone, I don't know who, didn't pay the electric bill and then the electricity was cut out for the whole complex. This is basically not anyone's fault in the complex and yet everyone suffered because of bad maintenance. So definitely ask a lot of questions about complexes. They're, I think they're very nice and there's many, many complexes which are well maintained and have good amenities, uh, good access and supermarkets close by. But yeah, keep in mind there's many types and you should always ask many questions about them. Of course, we visited houses as well, but I think this is a whole other topic, what to look for when you buy a house. I will gladly make another video just about houses. For the third point, I'm going to refer to a classic one whenever looking for any kind of property, which is location, location, location. In Tarifa, this makes a big difference in terms of price, weather, amenities, infrastructure, access and a lot of other things. While for example in Andalusia most of the properties are set in the same kind of natural context and with the same kind of like access possibilities or infrastructure, in Tenerife this is super different. So let's take for example the south coast. This is one setting. If you go up and towards the center of the island then that's another context. If you go to the north that's a third one. If you go up the hill in the north that's a fourth one. So there's many, many different places and all of them, trust me, have different weather. They're all microclimates. They have different scenes. They have different people living there. They have different kind of shops. They have different kind of entertainment possibilities, beaches, even the beaches are different. So if I look in the south coast as well, the scenery changes from city to city and from village to village. In some villages or some cities there are just Spanish people living or like mostly Spanish. In some cities there are mostly foreigners. Some cities in the south have access to the beach easily, some don't. There's many, many locations actually on this island. There's not just like one island of Tenerife. There's actually many, many places. Also, the island is not that big, so you could go around the island, I think in around two hours by car. And around the whole island, I think you would find at least 10 different contexts of villages and cities that you can explore. This is definitely something to keep in mind that there's many, many places to explore in Tenerife before deciding on just one. I have a video in which we tried the north in the winter uh, and I compared it to the south. And that is a very generalist comparison that is just north versus south. But there's way more nuance to that uh, regarding the actual area in the so south and the actual area in the north and between areas in the, in the north and in the south. Point number four is again related to point number one and real estate agents, but this time in a beware kind of situation. They are up to some tricks. So as we discovered, there's many times at the end of the viewing, there's this sentence that seems very casual and like random, but it's actually not as we discovered. So the real estate agent would say something like, Oh, if you like this apartment, I think you have to move really fast because there's a couple from Germany which are trying to get a loan right now. They really want to buy this apartment. So yeah, just that, just, just keep that in mind. No, there's no German couple trying to take a loan. We actually checked online one of the listings and this apparent imaginary German couple 
never got their loan because they never bought that house. It was still online after a few months. So yeah, there's definitely no one. There are many stories to be heard about imaginary buyers, which like should put pressure on you on making a fast decision. But actually you should always take your time because what is meant for you will be yours. And that is because you really want it, not because an imaginary couple waits for their loan and puts pressure on you because yeah, that's not realistic. Also another point regarding the approach of other real estate agents and our agent that, that helped us is the fact that I was always telling this to our agent. I was always telling, this is a story, this is not true. And she always said, yeah, you're right. They're, try <laughs> they're trying to make a sale. You just take your time. You don't, have to, you don't have to take this seriously. So yeah, that's a good point. That's something that you want to hear from your real estate agent. The last point that I want to address is regarding a very popular subject, which is whether it's a good investment to buy a uh, real estate in Tenerife. While we weren't looking for a place as an investment, I still want to address this because I feel like I observe the market here and how things come and go for a while. And I just want to share what I've seen for you to like know like another part of the story as well. I've actually known people who bought apartments here way, way back and they sold them recently for a, a, like a very good profit. The apartments were sold very fast without any hassle. Well, of course, you know how they say with stocks, uh, historic performance doesn't guarantee future reward. This is, this applies to everything basically. We'd also seen listings which were online for months and probably they're still online. So I think with investing here, it takes a lot of research and a lot of good information in order to make a good choice. If the property is a good choice in itself, so basically, if you would like to live there, so if it's a nice place in a nice apartment complex with nice amenities and so on, that is a good choice and that will make a good investment because if you chose it and you thought that, oh, this is a cool place to live, chances are other people will find it as well. If you think about it with the mindset of, I just want to buy anything that is cheap, I don't really care about anything, I just want to buy something cheap and fast and to rent it, then the chances of, of that being a good investment are lower because usually if you invest more time in making this choice with more research, more informed about what you're buying, you make a better choice. I think buying property is, is a very, very big investment of money, but also of time if you want to make a good choice. I'm not talking about this in the sense that uh, you have a lot of money and you don't really care if it's a bad investment. I'm talking in the sense that you want that amount of money to have value in the coming years. So I definitely think that there are two sides to this. There could be good investments and there could be bad investments. Both are valid, but both are, I think, quite easy to analyze, to research, and you can get to like a good investment and a good choice if you put your mind to it and you put a bit of effort into it. And as a conclusion to this point, I also want to emphasize the fact that no one on the internet or like in general can tell you what would be a good investment for you or not because nobody's in your shoes so nobody knows your personal choices. As always I hope you found this video useful and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I will answer each and every one of them and yeah I'll see you soon and I'll see you soon and I'll see you soon. <laughs>